Hello friends, I welcome you back to my online classes. In my previous class, I have explained you two contributions of cornless linears. Cornless linears, father of taxonomy, two of his contribution made the study of diversity of organisms on this earth easy. Number one, he explained us, he gave us a method of scientific naming of organisms using two words. That is generic and specific epithet. This method of naming of organisms proposed by Carlos Linnaeus, we call it as binomial nomenclature. How is it done? Five universal rules for binomial nomenclature has been explained. Explained in the previous class. In this class, I will be explaining you second important contribution of Carlos Linnaeus. That is classification. Because a scientific identification and proper classification of an organism is a basic requirement for us to understand and appreciate the biodiversity. So, the second important contribution of Carlos Linnaeus is his, his proposed, proposed concept called Linear Hierarchy of Classification. We are going to study. First of all, The branch of taxonomy Taxonomy is one of the oldest and basic branch of biology. Taxonomy deals with Identification, classification and naming of organisms. A broader perspective called systematics. Because the scientific study is essential. A random study is not that. Science itself is a systematic study of nature. And taxonomy should be much more systematic. Our rules have to be followed. So there is hierarchy of classification where the organisms are classified according to different stages, different steps which are called taxons. We shall study 
this hierarchy of classification with suitable examples in this class. Dear children, you have to write that. It's in the textbook also. Hierarchy of classification of living organisms in ascending order, starting from species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, or division, and kingdom. In ascending order, it is called. Because we are starting from simple and going towards the complex. If, if the arrow marks are put to reverse, then it will be called descending order. You have to write it and practice. I will explain all this concept with suitable examples, making use of our colorful PowerPoint presentation. So, let me take you into the second part of my class that is PowerPoint presentation. I hope uh, the audio and video is uh, clear and the slides are visible to you children. Well, taxonomy When we look at the biodiversity, different varieties of organisms, they are classified into different taxa based on some characteristics. For example, it may be the external features which we call as morphology or internal organs arrangement which we call it as anatomy. And we also consider the habitat where they live and the evolutionary significance of the organisms. So in taxonomy, the organisms are classified systematically based on different characteristics. Along with identification and nomenclature, Classification is also very important part of taxonomy. This taxonomy, the word taxonomy may be new to us, but the interest of human beings in understanding biodiversity is not new. From ancient days, human beings are always been interested in knowing more about the various kinds of organisms. Because man is dependent on varieties of plants and animals for his daily requirements such as food, clothing and shelter. Remember nature is not dependent on human beings. Human beings are dependent on nature. Earth the nature and biodiversity existed before origin of man on this earth. We are the last one to come to this earth. So we should not think the earth belongs to us 
we are the supreme we will control the nature no it's wrong because we are dependent on the nature we are dependent on various organisms for our daily requirement so man was interested in classification of varieties of organisms that he is seeing on this earth in the earlier days man used to classify the organisms based on the uses from his perspective he used to see the organisms he used to classify the organisms into useful and harmful organisms which now we consider as non scientific for example a hen a cattle he used to consider as a useful organism hen is a bird cattle is an animal he used to put them in the same category whereas a snake frog peacock they are of no use for him so he used to put them in the same category frog is an amphibia snake is a reptile peacock is a bird they are different from each other but he used to put them in the same category so that classification that is the earlier classification of human beings can now be considered as a non scientific but that was an attempt tried by the human beings in the earlier days look at this uh, simple example a beautiful uh, pet dog is there dog is a common name which cannot be understood by the people all around the world because it is an english word so it is given a scientific name using two words canis lupis canis is genus name lupis is specific epithet that is naming what about classification the classification of this animal is not made in a single step there are different stages different steps different categories which we call as a taxon starting from lowest species to the highest kingdom you already know that the plant uh, uh dog is not a plant it is an animal so it is uh, in animal kingdom kingdom animalia and it is a uh, uh, chordata it does not come into any other invertebrate phylums and it is a mammal because it has hairs on the body it drinks milk when it is young like that based on different characteristics this dog is classified into different taxon which are called hierarchy hierarchy means different stages every level from lower to higher level should be in that position only you can't 
interchange them. This is the contribution of Corliss linears. We, hence, we call it as linear hierarchy. For naming of organisms, he proposed binomial nomenclature. For classification, he proposed this method that is linear hierarchy. In order to classify the organisms, what are the characteristics we consider? We consider its external features. If it is a plant, we consider whether the roots are tap roots or fibrous roots. How are the leaves? How is the arrangement of veins and veinlets? How are the flowers? Every external details we consider. For an animal also we consider the external features. Morphological details. Along with that internal structural organization is considered which is called anatomical details. What about the cellular details? Yes sir, cellular details are also equally important. The first kingdom, Monera, is different from remaining four kingdoms. You know that life on earth is classified into five different kingdoms. Monera, Protista, Mycota, Plantae and Animalia. The first kingdom, Monera, the cell is prokaryotic. Whereas the remaining four kingdoms, the organisms have eukaryotic cells. prokaryotic cell inside the cell there is no definite nucleus the organisms belonging to kingdom monera for example bacteria have prokaryotic cell so along with external appearance internal structural details we also consider the cellular types developmental process how there is embryonic growth embryological details whether there is a direct development or indirect development, if there is a larval stage in between, that also comes into consideration for classification. Ecological information. How these organisms behave with other individuals of the same type and different type. Whether they live individually or in a colony. All these things are now considered for classification in modern days. In, in uh, ancient days, as it was non-scientific which we consider now, he used to consider only two things. If an organism is useful for man, put in this category. If the organism is not useful, put in that category. But now, various things are considered for classification. See the slide. So much colorful varieties of plants are there. We classify them into 
monocot and dicot if they are angiosperms we also classify them into bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms is one separate lesson is there plant kingdom for the study of the plants at that time you will study how much interesting the classification of animals is, uh, plants is there with suitable examples so characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the process that are basic to taxonomy hence we say taxonomy is a branch of biology which deals with the study of identification classification and nomenclature of organisms nomenclature means naming of organisms this is animal kingdom showing wide varieties of animals another important terminology systematics yes the overall science is a systematic study you can't study randomly haphazardly moreover in biology taxonomy is very very systematic study it's the organization of our organisms organization of organ organisms that means you are going to classify the organisms systematically you are going to name them systematically you are going to identify them systematically systematics is a wider perspective of taxonomy see human beings interest on study of organisms is not new he is not only interested in knowing wide varieties of organism he is also interested to understand the relationship between various organisms you are not going to study any individual organism separately because any organism cannot remain isolated separately it depends on food the shelter with the other organism so study of an individual organism is also study of a part of the nature individual study we can call it as taxonomy i want i want to identify classify and give a name to a single organism that is fine that is taxonomy but now a wider perspective is coming because that a single individual is not separate isolated in the nature it is in relation with the other organisms hence the systematics comes into picture this word systematics is actually a latin word systema means systematic arrangement of organisms Carl Linnaeus made this word systema systematics very popular he writes a book regarding classification of organisms and gives the title of the book as systema naturae 
Systema Naturae is the name of the book written by Carl Linnaeus. Naturae refers to nature. Systema refers to systematics. The scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification, nomenclature and classification. Systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship. Yes. The monkey group. We say man is evolved from monkeys. Monkeys, chimpanzees, Gorillas, orangutans, human beings all come under a single family. There is relationship between these species, organisms. Even that has to be considered in a classification of organisms. So now systematics is a broader perspective. Taxonomy is there which gives a complete description of an organism. Classification, nomenclature of an organism, study of the overall uh, morphological details of the organisms. Everything is there when a particular species is considered. You have to tell the name of an organism. On the board you have seen, I have drawn a cartoon of a, a rat. It is a species. A rat is a species, a human is a species. A neem tree is a species. Coronavirus is a species. When a particular species comes into picture, we have to study all aspects of it in systematics. Carlos Linnaeus has made it easy or convenient, the classification. Because classification is not a single stage process. He has given a hierarchy, different levels, categories, which is universally accepted and followed. Classification is not a single step process, but involves hierarchy of steps, represents a rank or category. Since the category is the part of overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called taxonomic category and all categories togetherly constitute taxonomic hierarchy. Species is a category, genus is a category, order, family, phylum, kingdom, every stage is a category. which are called taxonomic hierarchy, their, their position cannot be interchanged. Each category, rank or taxon referred as unit of classification. Taxon is a taxonomic group of plants and animals with similar tribes at any ranking. What is this the tribes? Characters. So in every stage of linear hierarchy, starting from species to the end kingdom, at every stage, every stage is called taxon, we find the organisms with similar characters. 
दीज टेक्सोनिक ग्रुप्स और कैटेगरीज आर डिस्टिंक्ट बायोलॉजिकल एंटिटीज दैट आर नॉट मियरली मॉर्फोलॉजिकल एग्रीगेट्स दे लुक सिमिलर सो दैट वी हैव पुट देम नो नॉट लाइक दैट they have evolutionary significance they are very unique varieties of organisms for example insects you find wide varieties of insects the maximum varieties of organisms on this earth are insects only millions of varieties of insects are being discovered and the process is continuing for example in amazon forest the number of insects present are uncountable but all insects fall under the phylum arthropoda class insect why all of them for example house fly mosquito cockroach butterfly an ant is totally different from a butterfly a butterfly is different from a mosquito but they all fall under same phylum arthropoda because they have jointed legs sir what about spider spider is also comes under the same phylum arthropoda but it is not in the class insect because spiders have four pairs of legs but insects have three pairs of jointed legs any insect you consider kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda class insecta then comes the lower ranking taxonomical studies of all known organism have led to the development of common categories such as this is hierarchy kingdom phylum or division whenever you are using uh, the plants you have to use the word uh, division whenever you are considering animals you have to use the word phylum then class order family genus and species so the linear hierarchy is as follows kingdom phylum or division class order family genus species every stage is a category or a taxon every stage in the hierarchy is a taxon species is the lowest category as we go up it is called ascending order that's what i told you to practice what is given in the book what is a species it is the basic unit of classification <coughs> henceforth we consider linear hierarchy taxonomic category the categorization of organisms at a different rank or taxon starting from species genus family order class phylum or division and kingdom in my next class let us study the characteristic feature of every taxon starting from species and will go to the kingdom by studying each and every taxon 
dear children you again i am telling you because it is a neat question species genus family dash 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 kingdom three dash are there a b c kingdom family i'm sorry species genus family dash a dash b dash c phylum kingdom the question will be what is to be present in dash b family will be given in an option order will be given in the option class will be given in the option division will be given in the option you will write order you will select the option order so this has to, the question can be asked in different methods so if the arrow marks are going upwards it is ascending order species becomes first if the arrow marks are reverse kingdom becomes first species becomes last then it is called descending order i'll continue my class in the next session until then please take very good care of yourself children god bless you